Yes. Oh, let me turn you up. You're not so you're not so loud, Ma. Let's turn you right hello, up. Hello, popcorn junkies. Hello, 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 hello. Hi. Hiya. <sighs> this is a review of Wanka. Wonka. <laughs> Willy Wonka. Willy no, Wonka. Just yeah, Wonka. Isn't just it? Wonka. Yeah, just Wonka. Yeah. You total Wonka. You total Wonka. Um, if you're wondering why I've got a red mouth, it's because I'm drinking blood. Beetroot juice. Tell oh, you what, I've got a red drink as well. Have you? I tell you what we should do, Mum. We should do a little run through some of the films we're excited about for this year. Maybe when you head over this weekend. I, I, the only reason I was saying that was I was just thinking of Nosferatu by Robert Eggers with Willem Dafoe and Nicholas Holt. Really? And Lily oh, Rose that Depp. fantastic. Oh, give us some more, please. Wonka is the um, it's the prequel, the origin story, the brand new movie. Why do they do prequels? I just don't understand. Well, I think an origin story, I like it in so far as... Do you? Yeah, as a thing. I think it's quite sweet. It, it suggests that we all are really invested in our characters and we want to know where they come from. I know, but that is so not true, is it? What, what isn't? <laughs> that we're interested in our characters. I am! And the more you can flesh them out, the more believable they become. And then the more believable they become, the more identifiable they are. And you get the idea. It goes on and on and on. Anyway, I think the thing for me about all of this Willy Wonka, I was going to say Winky Wanker, all this Willy Wonka nonsense is you've had Gene Wilder in the original. Yeah, it was the bee's knee, wasn't he? He was not just the bee's knees, mums. He, he was the, he was the, he was the locusts locums. He was, he was the, the Wonka to end all Wonkers. He was a total and utter Wonka. I liked Jim, Johnny Depp. I mean, he didn't. They didn't do it the same at all. But I quite liked his iteration. Thought, if yeah, you liked. yeah. Maddie really likes his his Wonka. But but I found him a two. He suffered from the Tim Burton effect of being sort of photoshopped and having no emotion and, and just being still. And anyway, I didn't. But Gene, yeah, what I liked about yeah. Gene Wilder's character was he was a he was actually a psychopath. He was a sociopath, Willy Wonka. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. But he was good as a psychopath. Yeah, but the, you didn't feel he liked children. I mean, he had moral boundaries, but he didn't <laughs> like children. And and he was willing to dispatch with them. I think that was the thing that intrigued me as a kid was, it was like, wow, he's willing to really put them through the rinser. Well, don't they say that Roald Dahl didn't actually like children? Well, so and I think, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think this whole idea of Roald Dahl, the very thing about Roald Dahl is that I think the reason he appealed and appeals is that he's so politically incorrect in the way in which he approaches yeah. stuff. And my yeah. worry with this film going into it was, how will they hold on to that irreverent, slightly anarchic, kind of dark side to Willy Wonka? Yeah, yeah. Well, basically, they didn't. <laughs> no, absolutely. I think it's as sweet, as sweet, as sweet as candy floss. It's directed by Paul King, which explains everything, really, because he directed yeah. the Paddington, Paddington films. And whatever you think of the Paddington films, you've got to accept Paddington 2, according to Nick Cage, is one of the greatest films ever made. It's good. I think I, it's good. I've, heard, I've, I've not seen Paddington 2. I enjoy Paddington 1. You've not seen Paddington 2? It's a, a huge... Hugh Grant moment that's beyond Hugh Grant moments at the end oh, is of there? Paddington well, maybe, 2. Oh, maybe I have seen Paddington 2 then. No, I think I have. Um, so, Paddington, and, and I think what you get with this film is everything you expect from a Paddington film. Every yeah. actor that you feel you know, but perhaps have forgotten their name, appears... Yeah. Um, they're almost like that game of guess. It's like that game of guess who. As the things come up, you guess yeah, them, and true, you know, they're all true. in there. Um, and as I say, I, can, I mean Olivia Coleman's in it. I have to confess, I think Olivia Coleman was slightly overacting. Didn't you think? Uh, as I mean, well, it, she drove me up the wall. Alongside the guy who I really like normally, who's the he's a sort of comic actor, the tall bald guy who just played it so. Oddly, uh, the, bloke, the bloke that was in the show, yeah. I didn't know him at all. Yeah, no, but, but he's quite an alternative kind of stand up comic oh, kind of. Okay. But I just thought he was very straight. Anyway, anyway, there was all, all this sort of stuff. I wasn't quite aware of how much of a musical this was going to be. No, no, I didn't either, Mark. And I was, I was shocked, surprised, and amazed because if somebody says musical to me, I immediately think I don't want to know. I want to punch but, my so, own face in really hard. Yeah. Until, until my jaw came in. Five minutes into it, it's become a musical. The, yeah, well, five minutes in, I was beginning to punch my own face, dislocate my <laughs> jaw and hammer my head against a corner of a wall. Um, yeah. And then something really strange happened. I know what happened. What? You got seduced by Timothy Chalamet. What happened? Because he's so, he's so, he's so good. He gave this everything. He did. But he didn't he's give it... He's the ultimate song and dance man. Isn't I mean, he? he never has been before, but yeah. he is now. I mean, I'm not necessarily I'm not necessarily sold on the Willy Wonka that he was told to sell us. But in terms of, no. the, in terms of the Wonka 
he was obviously contracted to sell. I thought he went to, he didn't go at it too hard, as in he was determined for this to win. Much in the same way that what I can't stand about Mamma Mia is the way in which Meryl Streep goes for it in a sort yeah. of self-consciously goes for it way. He doesn't go for it in a self-consciously, he doesn't mind looking silly and he, he goes for it in terms of being truly eye-openingly real with the character. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I agree entirely. I mean, considering his last, the last time he was out in the film world, he was playing a cannibal. He was eating people. pretty much a very different look. Wasn't he eating his girlfriend's leg or something? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Wow. I mean, I thought I, I was, I was shocked, staggered and amazed. And it was him that carried me through undoubtedly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I just wanted to watch him and he, um, I couldn't believe how good it was. No, I thought it was great. And I, I, I think a few other notables, the, the young girl who played Noodle, I thought she was sweet. She was good, yeah. They, they did a very clever thing right at the beginning, I think, which is a key constituent element, I think, of the original film. that uh, One doesn't realise this is what makes the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory work. But when you dig into it with people of my generation and you say, oh, yeah, we all remember the girl who blew up into a ball and is rolled yeah. off and the, the boy that gets sucked up the chocolate tube and all that kind of, and the one that chews and then they go into the telly yeah, and all that. Yeah. But the bit that really kind of magically gives you a sense of class and, I don't know, haves and have-nots and all that kind of stuff was all the stuff with the grandparents all in the same bed. And I yeah. thought this did, even though Olivia Colman was horrendously overacting, and she could have taken some letters from Willy, from, from Willy Wonka, actually, because he, he didn't. Yeah. One thing he didn't yeah. do, bizarrely, is overact. He just, he played it straight. If that's, yeah. Given that it's a musical and it's Chuck Wonka, playing yeah. it straight means it was quite over the top. But he, do you know what I mean? He played it straight. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, but I liked the fact that he was, essentially, he mistakenly signs a contract, and he's in extreme poverty. Yeah. So you have that yeah. poverty wealth thing going on again, which I thought was a really yeah. key part of the original film that I really liked. So what did you think of the Chocolate Cartel? So the Chocolate Cartel, Matt Lucas, that wonderful actor chap from um, uh, The Peep Show. I thought I liked them. He didn't do anything, Matt Lucas. Matt did Lucas he? didn't, but the, the main guy did. The middle guy did. The I main guy did. Yeah, I the thought main he was quite fun. I did, they were right. They were the villains in the piece, weren't they? And I mean, you know, yeah. corporate culture and all that kind of stuff. If I had a problem with the film, I wasn't sold on. And I know a lot of people make, are going on about, oh, the production design. I didn't think the meshing of CGI with production design worked at all well. I, I thought... Oh. It, no, felt... it drove me up the wall, Mark. In fact, it fought against... I mean, Timothy Chamberlain was so good to me. It was mm. like everything. And then he was fighting against the CGI, which was so... Everywhere. Rudimentary, you can't though. It and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, you're it's right. Too it, much. You're right. It was everywhere, but not everywhere, everywhere. in a well-executed way. It was just like plastered no. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it was. And I mean, I always think I can't tell when something's CGI, but all of this was CGI. Yeah, so, yeah, and and I, yeah. and I think that was one of the magical aspects of the original film. Was of course when you go into that set, when you go through the doors, and you see yeah. the chocolate fountain, and and it's all, and he's pulling flowers off that are that are sweets. The, it's the magic of that was the re, you know was the the realism of it and this lacked that massively i thought this was of yeah. all the things they needed to get right in this film was they needed to get the real i mean that's not to say some of it wasn't like that but they lent heavily they lent heavily on mass cgi and they would concentrate on just little bits of production design to give us the kind of sweets or the chocolates or the edible items and i yeah. just wanted you remember like the 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 flavored wallpaper in the original film i didn't feel there were any magic i felt they could have had more magical moments like that yeah their main magical moment was the sweets that take you up in the air yeah which yeah. was okay. You don't get many of those anywhere. I thought, even though, and I hate musicals, but I didn't mind watching Timothy Chalamet sing, bizarrely. I didn't, nor me, nor what's me. What's going on there? I mean, I, I was quite, I was totally with it because of him all the way through it. But I can't remember a single song from it. Not one of them was catchy. Not one of them had a riff. No. Or, I couldn't help but feel rather cynically this was all, the entire enterprise was a shoe in to put Wonka the musical on at that enormously ugly theatre in the middle of Soho. So I feel that's what's coming next. Uh, this is clearly yeah. the film of which, you know, it's already baked into it is that there's going to be a musical. Um, so the mu the songs weren't notable. I thought the villains were OK. They were fun. Only OK. Because the main the main one was the other guy, not those three. It was the superintendent or something. Okay, who getting got fatter. Really fat and then 
I didn't like him at all. No, but he, he, he has much more screen time than the, than the others. But he was a kind of hangover from the days of Roald Dahl, wasn't he? Politically yeah. incorrect, as he got fatter and fatter. I thought he we could. A bit like Roald Dahl now. I think well, I feel that he should have been made to get even fatter. I was hoping someone would explode. I felt this needed, and I think um, young, yeah. I think a young audience can cope with like someone getting so fat they explode or something yeah. that's sort of so politically incorrect that it's in keeping with Roald Dahl's wrong use clearly of so much language because yeah. for me this was wanting it lost the Roald Dahl illicitness that, yeah. e that even though I'm not sold on it even Matilda still holds on to a little bit um, but then what about okay so we can't not talk about um, uh, the Oompa Loompa oh Oompa Loompa well um I find I found him funny. Hugh Grant. Yeah. You know what was wrong about the pre-promotion uh, interviews for this film? What? He what? talked about the fact that he his body, the animated yes. body of his Oompa Loompa, bore no relationship to what he was asked to do when on set. No, he did talk about that. Yeah. And that ruined a huge part of it for me because if I hadn't known that, I would have think I think I would have bought more into the success of how they made the, his CGI body. I think what they should have done was got him to do stuff and then just shrunk his body down because yeah, it, yeah, it, it ended right. up, you ended up feeling like it was just a head, he was just a head performing. Yeah, I felt he did that deliberately. He said that deliberately. Cause I mean, he, in all the interviews I saw where there was he and Timothy together, Timothy was unreservedly charming, mm. charming, charming. He's a sweet. Hugh Grant was unreservedly pain in the neck. He's like a scrotum. Well, yeah, but also, yes, yeah, scrotum physically, but also <laughs> so grumpy. Oh. I mean, we've seen him do grumpy. He's got to get over know. this. I mean, people are getting a little bit sick and tired of him moaning about every part he takes. Yeah, I know, exactly. You know, don't, mean, don't take the part. I, I, I felt for Timothy because they kept having them on together and Timothy kept saying things, ridiculous things like, when I knew I was acting with Hugh Grant, I was so pleased. And, and you're thinking, really? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I thought it was kind of it was kind of all right, and I think as a it, it kind of and then it sort of rumbled along, and I found the conclusion a bit twee, and it was all a bit it was all a bit you know, and him finding the place where he was going to. But I just thought the CGI let it down. It became it lost focus the more it went. But at its heart, I thought it was a really what's the word? I thought it was a really honourable and oh. honest performance by Timothy Chalamet. Oh yeah, his performance undoubtedly. I mean, he was going to give it everything. I feel having. I mean, he spoke in one interview I saw, he was speaking about he, he loves doing all his independent stuff and quite sort of tough mm. characters and movies and that. But he, when they suggested him for this, he was determined to do it well. Mm. And, mm. Um, and he, he does. He I did. mean, he's, you know, he's great. I just wish they'd maybe come out of it with a, his own tune that was as strong as Come With Me and You'll See the oh, World yeah. of Pure Imagination. I wanted something where I came out of it thinking, oh my God, yeah, he can sing and, and that's the song of the film. So it was weird. It felt pleasant enough. Yeah. But I don't think, we're I gonna, I don't think we should see another one. I think that's it. I think we should just leave it at that. Yeah, no, I do. But don't you think it'll come out every year now? What do you Another... mean? Oh, I bloody hope not. It will. Oh, God. Because didn't it end on a thing where it well, they, was Well, come yes, back? yeah, no, absolutely. But, I mean, they can only get so far and then we get to Gene Wilder, don't we? So, well, that's true. Yeah. And also, Timothy Chalamet will be off doing something incredibly yeah. serious. He'll be, eating, yeah. he'll be eating the arsehole of something in a, in a sort of barren dystopian, no! you know, somewhere. Well, he's fucked a peach and he's done something else and he's done something else, hasn't he? I mean, and now he's Wonka. It's true. He was a good Wonka, but it's not the same Wonka that fed into and was the origin story I expected of Gene Wilder, if I'm honest. Yeah, no, no, no. True, true. Yeah. Anyway. What what would you give it? <sighs> I think it's a per it. I think it's a perfect family film for Christmas. I think that's it was, you know, if we'd have reviewed it earlier, I'd have fully recommended people taking their kids. I think it could have been naughtier. I think it could have been more irreverent. I think youngsters, whether we like it or not, I know we often say, oh, the innocence of youth and they shouldn't. I just think youngsters could deal with and we and demand a bit more sophistication, even in their humour. So I think there could have been a bit more nastiness. If I'm honest, I was most disappointed by the turns of the Olivia Colmans, uh, Sally Bowles. What's her name? Not Sally Bowles. You know, the other. Oh, yes. Yeah. You no, know, no, the one. No, I know who you mean, yeah, she's yeah. in Paddington and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, they trot in, they do what they do. You think, you go, know, oh, it's you. And they're in danger of just being that face that pops up in every British film. And you don't want them to be that because, you know, they're... so, you know, all the supporting cast and all the CGI and it all just became a mulch of CGI. And really, if thank God for Timothy Chalamet, that's what I'd say. Yeah. He was the yeah. beating, he was a beating honest heart, which who approached the project with almost that naive trust that Americans can. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, OK, I'm going to do this. What would I give it? I'd give it, pff, I don't know. 
I'm going to be right down there. I'll give it 50 out of 100. Yeah, I was going to say that. I'll give it 45, actually. And and only that high because of Timothy. Yeah. Because yeah. the CGI literally drove me insane. Mm. It went from one CGI set to another, didn't it? Yeah, it did. But, it um, made me feel yeah. sick. It was like I'd eaten or lived through a big bag of M&Ms. Yeah, it made you feel sick. It exactly. made you feel sick, yeah. yeah. Oh, there you okay. go, guys. Tell us what you think. Did you enjoy it? <laughs>